Hi everyone, today I have a DT um, project to share with you. It's for Shabbylicious, the store that Lily has on the Sibbet. And um, I'm. let's get ahead with that, shall we? I have made some little ballet slippers out of paper mache. And I've used the beautiful, beautiful products from Lily's store to decorate it. Now the paper mache is basically the same co concept as when I did my um, art dress corset. So at the end of um, showing you the ballet slippers finished, I will do a brief how-to, um, how I made the ballet slippers. But, um, you know, of course, if you don't want to watch that, that's fine. Just X out. But I'll just give you a little look. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's ever so sweet. I've used this beautiful pink lace from Lily's store and it actually turned out very, very pretty. I've used all her little doodad flowers to decorate it. And down the toe part here, I've just used half of one of the silver filigree pieces that she sells. I cut it in half. As you can see, I put half down the front and I have half on the other ballet slipper down the front as well. I also used one of these on the back. Let's just have a look. You can see it's curled around the back there, around the heel, and it's just because they're so easy to bend. This little bit of lace at the front here is just one of these lovely little appliques she sells. So I just I put that in there with one of her larger doodad flowers. This has a bit of bright pink in this doodad flower, but I just got a bit of acrylic white paint and um, softened that look and then just put a bit of glitter on it as well. I have a few little rhinestones and they're just these lovely little rhinestones you can get off the chain links and I've popped them in various places both in the heel and on the toe. This is also one of these little appliques. All I did to that was I cut I p cut it above the join there and spread it out so it would stand up and there behind we have some more little Lily doodad flowers. Inside oh, where did that go? Inside I cut the shape of the the shoe and made like a little inner sole and then I covered it in this lovely lace here. As you can see I have a small lace running around the edge inside and a little bit of satin ribbon just to finish off the edge of the paper here. I also used my own ribbon. This is some beautiful vintage ribbon so that I can just tie a lovely bow and it can actually hang up really nicely like that. So you could have like one hanging and then have the other one slightly, you know, like that and hang them together on a wall and there's lots of lots of ribbon there to make a beautiful bow. Underneath I just used some book paper and cut a piece to fit. Slightly inked the edges. Sorry my children are going back to school tomorrow and they're just mucking around with their father. So there we have it. I also in between all these I just put a little bit of clear stickles glitter glue just to add a little bit more sparkle in those gaps. And as you can see inside I've just used a few more little doodad flowers just in the toe area to finish it all off. And that's it. That's my lovely little ballet slipper. I hope you like it. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I've wanted to make one for quite some time now. Um, and now I have. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much for joining me today. Bye.
and I'm going to make them out of paper mache. And what I've got here is it's it's just a little mold I've kind of put together. And all it is is I use toilet paper actually, but you could use tissue paper or paper napkins or whatever, but toilet paper always seems to squish together nicely once it's wet. Um, so I, I got some toilet paper, I wet it and I spread out some plastic film or cling wrap, whatever you want to call it. And then I started shaping it into what I thought would be a good shape for a ballet slipper. And um, I, this is where the foot part would slip into the ballet slipper. So it's mainly underneath and the, the side view. And of course, you know, you need to have that um, shape. You probably see it better from the back. The shape of an actual shoe going for you. And because it's still squishy underneath, I can keep sort of playing with that and making that, see this is the toe end down here, and making that the way I want it to be. And when I apply the paper mache, I'll be applying it to the bottom and to the sides, forming the shape of a ballet shoe. And see how I've kind of bent it a little bit, because I want it to appear like the foot is arched over. Um, but of course I can play with that as I go along. So I've wrapped it in cling film. I've put a little bit of sticky tape in places just to hold it down. And um, so now I'm going to paper mache my little mold. I didn't worry about letting it dry inside there because that would take hours and I wanted to get going. I have my paper pieces all set up here. I have a little bowl with some water and I'm just going to uh, put a little bit of PVA glue in here. I know a lot of people like to use flour and water and that's fine. You can use whatever glue you are comfortable with. Um, the reason I prefer to use PVA glue is because I want it to stay strong for a long, long time. I can't get the lid off, so that, uh, is that the only one I've got here? Ah, here we go. I got it. Um, last time I did paper mache, I actually used wood glue, and that was because that's what I had at the time. Um, not because it's any better than anything else, it was because it's what I had. Swish around. And I am going to show you the start of this and then I'll come back once um, the actual paper mache is dry. So I'll just show you the first part and I may even speed that up. And on a small project I always find it's much easier to use a um, smaller pieces of paper. I'm just going to put full strength on here to start with just to get it going because sometimes um, it's hard to stick to the cling film, you know, the way you want it to. So let's just see if that helps a little bit to start it off. So I'm back again. My little shoe is getting nicely dry and it's got quite a nice little shape to it as you can see. I do notice the back needs to come up a little bit higher though so I'm going to build that up and give this part a second coat. I'll probably give that a nice thick coat so that that will be the last I'll have to do. You've kind of got to, you know, um, just think to yourself well, what does a ballet slipper look like and take it from there. So we'll just build the back up. OK, 
Okay, so as you can see, I've just been easing it out a little bit to give it a better shape, and I will trim all that once it's completely dry. And it's not looking too bad at all now. It's got the basic shape of the ballerina that I've been wanting, so we'll put it up to dry because it's starting to stick to my fingers again, as you can see, because it's it's drying quickly. Okay, paper mache is quite dry now, um, dry enough to probably remove the inside. Now, this isn't going to, um, I don't think it will survive the removal of the paper very well because it will rip the plastic etc. Probably lose its shape too because it is still wet in there so what I thought I would do was just make a matching one as best I can and show you how I did it um, because you know I want to keep it close to the same sort of thing so what I've got here is I've got my cling film paper And I've got I've got my wet um, tissue paper or toilet paper, whichever you want to use. And I've got it probably very close amount as that I've got in here. Um, obviously not the right shape just yet. But what I'm I do is if I just wrap the cling film. In fact, I could probably do with just I'm thinking. Uh, I might just add a little bit more to that just a moment. I've just got a, a little bit more here that I've wet down and I'm just going to sort of pop it around this end so that I can maybe in there actually might be best. Okay that's probably a bit closer now. Okay so basically I'm just going to wrap this cling film around like that and that's all I have to do. I don't need all that excess so I'm going to cut that off. So you've got this sausage shape going there and then I'm just going to squeeze it in so it's about the same length as the other one so push it in but of course I want it opposite so see how like this would be the end where your big big toe would be where it comes out more I think no 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 that would be the big toe so we're making a pair like that so this is your big toe, and your big toe wants to be on this side. So we're kind of trying to get a matching set, so it would have to be like opposite. So we're wanting it to go in, of course, like that. And then... We've got to try and get that, like, the stumped toe kind of look. If you do it flat on the bench, it gives you a nice flat back like that, say. So. And then once it bends, of course it will get thicker, it needs to be a bit shorter, like that maybe a bit more out on that side and I think that's that's pretty well close to what we're wanting and the easiest way to help it keep its form is to just put a little bit of tape on it 
sticky tape or any you know, waterproof kind of tape would be fine to try and keep that nice shape going there. So I've put one there and I'll probably put another one as well just to kind of keep that like a waist kind of effect going. Now I want to trim this here like so and I want to put a couple of pieces here as well. close to what you're wanting as you possibly can. Because this one tends to come out a bit more here but I'm thinking well you know I could build that up with a bit of paper mache if I want to. I might have to just build that part up with a little bit of paper mache. Um, as I go along. Okay, so that's how I made that. And this one I've already started trimming. The little excess bits up to try and get, you know, make sure I've got a nice kind of shape going there. So it looks like a little ballet shoe. And now we're going to have to try and get this out. And because this is the first time I have ever done this, I've just got to do it as best I can. So I don't really want to cut the slipper. You know, I was going to originally cut the slipper off like I did with my bodice, but I'm thinking, um, you know, kind of go to all the trouble of getting the shape nice and that I didn't really want to okay what I'm gonna do is just open this up see how that's still wet in there and that way I might be able to just pull it all out And then I can pull the plastic off last. Here we go. Yep, that's good. That's going to work. Let's see how you can just pull plastic out. Gently, of course. Very gently. Oh, okay. That's just a little bit of the sticky tape stuck. Try to be careful. Removing. Okay. So that's all going to be covered inside once it's done and kind of 
was just a little bit. Oh, hang on. Yeah, I don't want to go prodding too much because that was the last part we did, the back part. So that is still a little bit um, damp. There. Might need some little little scissors here. Not that my hands are really made for using little scissors, but they do make it a bit easier. Okay. So that is a little ballet shoe. What do you think? I guess depends how it looks when it's um, embellished and that, that's what will make all the difference, the embellishing of it. So there we go, that's little isn't it? And I wanted to make one basically because um, you get, I wanted the, like the, the point toe type of shape rather than just a little ballet flat that babies might wear or something like that. So. Okay, um, I've got to stop picking at it and let it dry inside properly. But there we go, that's um, about a slipper, my very first try at making that. And I guess I can give it a little bit of shape while it's still drying. What do you think? Perhaps may have liked it a bit more arched, but I'm not going to complain too much because it's it does sort of have that ballet slipper look, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, so I'll I'll get this one done. I'm just thinking whether I can put that inside that plastic and just like. reshape it that way. Oh, that could work, couldn't it? That way I'm going to get the exact... Oops, that's what I'll do. I will, I will take some of this out till there and put that in there and that will give it the same shape. Hmm. Okay. Alright then. I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I've just joined them both and I think that's probably as good as or as close as it's going to get, like that. What do you think? That's pretty close match, isn't it? And that's the that's the other side. Actually, that needs to go in a lot more on the other side because we all know the shoes are much more narrow underneath than they are at the top. Okay, I think that's that's not too bad. That's not too bad. And then it'll have an arch, which as it dries, the arch will form like that. So, okay, it looks like I'm um, back to paper mache. So I shall see you when I have finished. There's my second one all done. I just need to cut it to shape. Um, but I think I'll remove the insides first carefully. Now this one's a little bit drier, mainly because I've left this one overnight. So let's just hope it doesn't stick. I'll be back in a moment. So these are the finished little ballet slippers. Um, this is the, the one I've started painting. Of course, they always look a little bit rough because it is paper mache after all, but I intend to cover it so that doesn't bother me one little bit. I'm going to be covering it with some lace. Uh, things that I think I could have done a little bit different, I think. The second, the second shoe that I took the plastic out of which is this one. 
I did find it hard to get the plastic out because I'd left it overnight. So if you can leave it, but don't leave it too long so that, you know, it comes away easily because the longer you leave it, the more it's going to, it seems to stick. So even now I've got a few little bits of plastic I can I can sort of see and uh, that could be the shine but I just felt it was a lot harder to get it out. Anyway, once you have um, taken the insides out, go around, check for any weak spots, you know, because sometimes it's hard to um, know if you've given everything an even coverage. So make sure there's no little holes or gaps or anything like that. If there are, fix it up. It won't take long. Just a, a few layers of paper in one spot isn't going to take long at all. Uh, and then cut them to the shape you desire. Looking at them now, I think I may have made them a little bit too shapely because, um, you know, ballet slippers... Actually, when I went and had a look, they're a little bit more uh, long and narrow. So yeah, I, I gave mine a little bit too shape, too much shape, but that's okay because, you know, they're the first ones I've done. That's probably a bit better. Yeah, I did want the shape underneath though because that's that's kind of where you, you know, you see it, and that's that will have a, a little strip like. A ballet slipper has some leather underneath, which is much narrower than the outside, so that's what I will do. But anyway, I'm not sure if I'm making a pair or two separate ones, but they're the finished paper mache slippers. Anyway, and um, I don't know if I'll be filming the decoration of it or not, because I just, I have to get up and down so many times, and it is, um, does take a long time to watch it all through and make sure you know you haven't got kids yelling all over the place not that they're here at the moment they're on holiday with their grandparents so it's really quite nice but um yep little little shoes or little ballet slippers that's how you make little paper mache ones okay i hope you enjoyed that and i'm very sorry if i went out of shot um i i don't do a lot of tutorials and you know I don't consider myself um, a tutor on YouTube I just like to show what I make and explain it as best I can but every so often I will do a tutorial so